all things good channel and to a new video how are you all hope you're all doing really well this week i have a very 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 busy week it is now midweek actually and i have done my speed awareness course this morning that was all fine in fact it was incredibly interesting so if any of you are unlucky enough to get caught speeding and you're given the option of points on your license or the speed awareness course i highly recommend the speed awareness course it has thrown up a lot of things for me today that i had forgotten i've been driving for over 30 years um there's some updates to the highway code that i kind of knew a little bit because of grace having passed a test only a couple of years ago but there was lots of different things that when i thought about it i thought wow that's very very interesting and even to the point where I think I might have mentioned to you that the speed I had or the speed I was going at was about seven or eight miles an hour over the limit. And when I got the speeding fine come through, I thought, that's not a lot. And then you see what could potentially happen in a crash when you are just one mile an hour over that speed limit is shocking. So it has taught me well and truly quite a lesson and it was incredibly interesting. So if you are unlucky enough to be in that position, go for the speed awareness course. I can highly, highly recommend it. Plus you don't get the points on your license. I wanted to also thank you all for your lovely warm comments after last week's video where I talked to you about mom getting her official Alzheimer's disease diagnosis, which although, like I said last week, and I've talked about in, in the comments, I kind of knew was coming, but to hear it out loud and, and to go now in the process officially is is a lot to process and a lot to take in. And I haven't responded to you all personally because it's been a week of reflection and a week of taking that information in and, you know, um, helping mom as much as possible, as I always do anyway. But I wanted to thank you all for your comments. I have read them all and you have touched me tremendously over the past week. I, I know that some of you are in exactly the same position as me or have been and have now lost relatives or, or close ones with the same disease. So a heartfelt thank you to you all. I truly, truly mean that. I really appreciate it and thank you so much. Mom is fine. There's a little bit of her in this week's video. Um, I've tried to catch on some good moments. She is a little bit oblivious, really, to the diagnosis. Um, I think she knows deep down. I just don't think she wants to talk about it. I don't think she wants to think about it particularly. She knows she's forgetful. She started on her medication. There's no side effects to that at the moment, which is great. And um, she knows she's taking it because she's got the forgetteries as we call it. But then we were out and about yesterday and we were talking again in the car about how wonderful she is for her age and how mobile she still is and that she wants to go out shopping. And then she said to me, of course, the worst thing would be if I lost my memory. That would be dreadful. I'd hate that. So she was then talking to me as if she'd got no recollection of having had her assessment and no recollection of actually being diagnosed with something official. So who am I to argue? I'm not going to correct her. I'm not going to change that. We're just going to get on with our day to day, get her out as much as possible when she wants to and when she's able to and just let her do her thing. And I will accommodate that. However, that comes upon me, if that makes sense, as will the whole family and my very supportive partner as well. So I have been blessed this week with lots of support from those people and from yourselves as well. And it, it is truly greatly appreciated. Thank you. So a very busy week as well, because I'm off to London tomorrow morning. Uh, this is a belated birthday present. I'm actually going to a musical in the West End. Can't wait. Um, so you're going to come with me to London this week. I've also purchased a piece of furniture for here in the kitchen, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. Um, it was from a charity shop. <clears throat> It was actually from the Salvation Army charity shop, but it looks new. 
and I'll show you in a second, but it's a piece of furniture for the kitchen that I think I'm going to find really useful. And I'm glad it fits because after I bought it, I suddenly had a panic thinking, oh no, what have I done? But it does fit. And I think I know what I'm going to use it for. I'll show you that in a second. But it's also inspired me to have a think about making some changes in my kitchen, which I think potentially will be somehow getting the units and the cupboards either painted in a white or ivory colour or to have my cupboard doors changed. Something any of you might be able to help me with because I will ask for your advice after you've seen this piece of furniture and I'll have a chat with you later about my ideas for the kitchen. But I need to do it on a bit of a budget. And if any of you know anybody that does these spray painting of kitchens, which I've heard a lot about, apparently very good and saves you replacing doors, do let me know if you know of anybody that does it or, you know, anybody that's had it done, let me know how you've got on. But um, yeah, let's get into this week's video, quite a bit to show you. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so here is said purchase. Now, as I said, I found this in the Salvation Army charity shop, advertised as a wardrobe, which I guess it is, but I've popped it in the kitchen, but it doesn't actually have wardrobe hanging space inside. What it does have are shelves. And what I really liked about it as well, the inside is like wood panelled, which matches my doors. I thought that's a lovely match. Now, as some of you will already know, because you would have seen my kitchen before, my kitchen is not white. It is 20 some odd years old. And it's this sort of very light, I don't know, is it oak? Oh, look at the mess. <coughs> <laughs> yes, the kitchen's a mess. It's sort of a light oak colour. And I think at some point this year, I want this kitchen to go white. I want it to be white and bright, as light as possible. I have got a lot of things in this kitchen that I want to declutter. There's things on top of the cupboards. They can go away if I empty some of these cupboards of the white plates and dishes and things that I've got and put them into here. Oh, what a surprise. Good morning, Myla. This has been delivered just this morning, so this is totally new for her. And um, yeah, it's pretty clean looking, isn't it? I must say, but I am going to now give it a good clean and decide what's going in it. One of the things I thought I would start with doing is putting all my herbs and spices in because this is taking up a lot of room now on this part of the worktop. And I do want to try and declutter as much as possible. So we need to get Myla out, get this all cleaned up, and then decide what's going in it. Brilliant. Uh, excuse me, uh, Myla, 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 come out, come out. dirty at all and I can honestly say all the bits there so you can move the shelves into place but honestly say I think it's new I do think it's a new piece of furniture so or if it's not it certainly has not been used very very much it's also come with the strap you can put onto the back and attach it to the wall but this piece of furniture is incredibly heavy and I don't think there's any chance of anybody pulling that down on top of themselves. I'll see how it goes as we fill it up. And also being behind the door, I think we're, we're going to be pretty safe with perhaps not putting that on the back, but I will have a look in a minute as to think and to see if I think that does actually need doing. So let's put the shelves in the place we want.
exactly are you doing up there? <coughs> you crazy girl. Hey. Yes, I'm talking to you. Is it because everybody stares at that black thing there? Therefore, if you sit in front of it, they'll stare at you. Oh, he's a beautiful Oh, he's a beautiful Hello, darling. How are you? I'm good today. You're good. Brilliant. Yes. You've come round for dinner, haven't you? Yes. Chicken and dinner. And it smells good and I can't wait. Good. <laughs> and what are you drinking, dare I ask? Uh, white wine. No, you're not. Oh. Champagne. Oh, sorry. Paul, I'm Champagne. so sorry. <laughs> Champagne. Is it lovely? Nostravia. Nostravia. Cheers. Nostravia, everybody. <laughs> Well, although my birthday was actually a week ago, my birthday present is happening today. The Invisible Chef, aka Paul, has treated me to a trip to London, stay in a hotel and a West End show, and I can't wait. London. Actually, to be honest, we're in Ealing at the moment, which is where we're staying, and we're just about to get the tube into London, the West End of London, to go to the theatre. You're coming. You're coming. the musical we can't wait no but it's definitely not and you can't lady I've just bumped into called Eve if you're watching Eve hello um it's one of our lovely um, followers here on the channel <laughs> who'd have thought it come to the middle of London and bump into one of you guys how lovely hope you've enjoyed the show Eve and I hope you're watching this Sunday but um yes we've come to watch Back to the Future the musical and we're here at the Adelphi Theatre in London which is really rather lovely so um yeah I'm just milking this birthday for everything I can really Oh, and Eve's got to meet the Invisible Chef. The secret is out. Join in. Well, that was brilliant. Highly, highly recommend that. It was absolutely great. The effects were great. The cast was brilliant. Singing was wonderful. What should we go and see now? What's this one? Can I see Tina Turner? <laughs> it's great, really. Turn it up, turn it up. Turn it up, turn it up. Turn it up, turn it up. So here we are having our moment on the bed. It's the next day and I'm back home from London. That was a lovely, lovely birthday treat, a lovely couple of days. And I feel quite rejuvenated for that, which is good. And it's just made me realise that how important it is to 
take a few minutes for yourself. It's been an emotional roller coaster, like I said last week, um, with everything going on and, you know, mum's official diagnosis and all sorts of bits and pieces and the sort of come down from Christmas and New Year and getting back into busy normal life. And sometimes it's the bed's moving because Albert Cat is jump, just jumped on the bed. Hello, Albert. Have a little rest. Sometimes it's, I, I forget, I don't know about you, to take a little bit of time out, do something different, do something nice, do something that takes you away from the everyday, even if it's only for a couple of hours or a day. It's really refreshing and rejuvenating and can put you then back on top form for the things you have got to do every day. And I can honestly say that just that night away and a couple of days of different scene. And of course, going to the theatre for me is just, well, it's like going home for me. But it takes you away for those two or three hours into a different world. And the only thing you can think about and concentrate on is that show. And it was it was a great show anyway. It was wonderful. But it was being so lovely just to have had a few minutes to myself. And I think it's really, really important, no matter what you've got going on, or how good or how bad things are, to just try and take, even if it's only a few minutes, a bit of time for yourself to do something you really enjoy. It could be something as simple as just saying, give me an hour, everybody. I'm going to have a bubble bath surrounded by music and candles, or it could be anything. And it doesn't have to be a, a week's holiday. Just something that brings you back, <laughs> brings you back to life. That's how I feel. I feel much, much better and rejuvenated. Um, having said that, going on to some key bits and pieces for this week, I have been back to the hospital, re this. And um, it's, there's some good news in that um, I've kind of now had all the all clear from anything nasty. But I did say to you um, that I thought I'd felt it come back um, what seems to have happened is where the scar tissue is has created another little trauma and it looks like a little polyp has formed in that area. So whilst it's going to be benign, but 99.9% .9 sure it'll be benign, that's got to be removed as well. And I think what's happening is when it was healing, the stitches were knocking my teeth and obviously there was swelling inside it was bruising on the outside and there was swelling inside and because it was swollen possibly during the healing process in the night I have probably bitten it again or I've bitten the stitches which has created a new trauma and has formed a little polyp so they're happy with what they've taken away initially before Christmas but I have got to have another extraction to remove the polyp and what they did say is they will do a slightly deeper operation which will take a little bit more of a chunk of my cheek away which means that it shouldn't then knock into my teeth whilst it's healing so actually the operation on this occasion will be a little bit perhaps worse than the first one but ultimately it should do the job now that isn't happening till the end of March so there's no great rush but in the meantime this feels OK. I'm just aware of it being there. Obviously, as I talk and as I eat, I can feel it rubbing against my teeth. So it's annoying more than anything. Nothing more than annoying. But anyway, so that's pretty good news. Mum's doing OK. I can honestly say that I've noticed a deterioration in mum since she started her tablets. But I think that's probably what normally happens with some medication. I know when I started the fluoxetine, the first week or two, I actually felt worse before I started to feel better. And I'm hoping that's what's occurring with mom. But she has got um, another review this week. Someone's coming to see her. It's, I think it's some point this week. So, and she's only on half a tablet daily at the moment. And they said that would be for a period of time. And then they'll make that one tablet or go up to one and a half tablets a day, depending on how she is. So I have a few questions for the people that will see her this week. Um, but I suspect there's two things involved here. One, she's getting used to the medication. It might have made her a little bit worse before it makes her better. And two, because it hasn't been a normal week and I've been away for a night, it's thrown her routine. 
And whenever there's a change of day or routine, it makes things worse. So there could be a bit of that involved. But on the whole, she's fine. I'm hoping to get her out this weekend. The weather's much, much better. It's much drier and the wind's dropped. So it's a nice opportunity to get her out. And I've also had a bit of a surprise visit this weekend from my son. Adam has come home just for the weekend. It was a bit unexpected, but he'd finished some really big assignments or whatever you need to call them at university. Are they called assignments? I don't know. The things that he needed to hand in. He was working really hard over Christmas and he had quite a few deadlines early January, which I thought was a bit unfair, but never mind. But he's done that, but he went through a massive period of stress a couple of weeks ago. And um, anyway, he's done it. He's come out the other end and then he said, I think I might come home for a weekend, Mum. I said, absolutely. You don't have to ask. Just turn up. So he's here just for a couple of days, which is lovely. So that's made the, the end of this week absolutely delightful. It's lovely to see him. And so I'm going to get on with my weekend and make the most of being with Adam for a bit. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this week's video. And if you have, please like and subscribe if you haven't done already. When we get to 2000 subscribers, I'm going to do another giveaway. So if there's anybody you think might be interested in the channel, let them know. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. It'd be lovely to have you on board. And I look forward to seeing you next Sunday, same time, same place. And until then, stay safe, stay in the boat and keep doing all things good. I'll see you next Sunday. Take care. Bye.